All right, hopping into Rogue Legacy. Making a quick little video to explain it to some people that might be interested. All right. Anyway, so the basic concept of Rogue Legacy is that it's a, uh, a 2D platformer with RPG elements and roguelike elements. Some people might call it a roguelike like. I don't know if roguelike is really appropriate. It's probably just uh, better to say it's a 2D platformer with RPG elements and kind of a unique concept that I haven't seen before. So Legacy, they use that term because whenever you die it's permadeath for that character and then you have to choose an heir and you get three choices so as I scroll left these are previous characters that I played all descendants and I've died many many times I don't know how long it would take to scroll all the way back but it's quite a few okay so here's the last guy I played Sir Gouda, the gallant shinobi uh, I didn't last that long. So here are his heirs. Three choices. And if you see on the right panel, it gives you the name, the class, some traits, and what spell they're with. Okay, It's kind of... everyone is, is similar um, in that they, they follow that same archetype, but there's different classes. And I'll show you a little bit more about that. Okay, so here I have a choice of uh, an assassin, a lich king, and another assassin. Traits, servant, you're very, very talented with few issues. I don't really know what that means. Or savant, sorry, not servant. Uh, endomorph, you're so heavy enemies can't knock you back. Okay, so that has a functional effect. You get hit, you won't get knocked back. And his spell is an axe. It throws a giant axe and an arc. That's okay. Um, lich king... Dwarfism, so he's small. You can see that the actual character height is quite a bit smaller. Dwarfism, you never get to ride roller coasters. Okay. Conflux is his spell. Basically, these orbs will bounce around the map and, and, and do a lot of damage. Um, another assassin, no traits, and spell is Quantum Translocator. It'll drop a shadow wherever you're at, and then you can run around anywhere, and then once you hit B again, you'll teleport back to that same spot. But I think I'm going to go with this guy. So hit A, confirm. Lich is kind of a cool class because you start with a smaller amount of health than some of the other classes, but every time you kill something, your max HP goes up a few, uh, few hit points. So they can be pretty valuable. Okay. So after you choose your guy, you're at the castle menu, and this is where you will pay with upgrade, pay for upgrades with gold that you collect um, while actually playing the game. So you can see my gold amount on the bottom right, where it says 635. That's how much gold I have now. And uh, these blocks that say max are pretty much one-time purchases, or I've maxed them out to where you can't spend any more money in them. The grayed out blocks are blocks that I haven't put any money into yet. So this top one is Potion Up. You can see Gut Cleansing leads to noticeable improvements for both potions and meat. Current is at 10% uh, health points and mana points. If I upgrade, I get plus 1%. So right now it's level 0 of 5. So you can put 5 points maximum into it. And right now the cost to unlock, as you can see right above my gold amount, uh, it says... 1080 gold to unlock. I don't have that, so I can't unlock it. 635 is barely enough to upgrade my health. Health is 540. Uh, 500 for mana. I could increase crit damage. But let's increase my health right now. Okay, now I'm down to 95. You really can't do anything with 95. Okay, so once you leave your manor, or, or I was calling it a castle, but your manor, that's where you uh, set up everything. You have a little test dummy, see if you can test any changes, your your crit or your base damage. And you got a smith. Blacksmith will let you upgrade your items. You have to get blueprints. All these question marks are blueprints that I haven't found, so this is blueprint needed. 
these three are blueprints that I have found and they will give uh, different bonuses and whatnot. So if I equip this I get plus 30 health but I lose out on damage. If I equip this I'll get plus 30 health and I'll get plus 2 damage to what I am at currently and my weight allowance well my weight allowance is 150 right now but the, the weight that I'm at right now will be decreased by 15. So this is what I have equipped right now. It's the blood sword which adds vampirism in effect whenever I kill something I get health back which is really nice but it's kinda heavy. It's heavier than the other swords okay and doesn't do as, as much base damage but that's okay. Um, helmets same concept chest piece, leggings, and then a cape. So what I'm aiming for is all blood armor right now because vampirism is kind of nice, especially with the Lich who already gets uh, max health for um, every kill. The Enchantress, Enchantress, similar in concept, except you have runes, they give you abilities. Like this lets me dash left and right uh, oh yeah, this lets me double jump, and there's another one that lets me jump again. So in, in essence, triple jump. So again, you gotta find a rune similar to finding blueprints, and then there's this guy, where this is kind of a weird concept. Okay, so the castle, which is where you actually fight or where you start fighting, beyond that guy, is uh, that's the the main meat of the game. But the concept is that it's procedurally generated. So it changes every playthrough. The whole layout, where the monsters are, where the gold is, and the, the chest with runes and blueprints and all that. That changes every playthrough, unless you talk to this guy. If you make this deal with him, you will get 60% of the gold you would normally get. So you're going to get less gold. All the gold that you find, 40% of it will go to that guy. But he will lock the castle in its current form. So it won't be randomized. Which could be good. You know, maybe there's a certain room that you want to go to again and again. Or a certain room that you haven't gotten to. So you'll want to lock the castle. I haven't really done it that much because I, I don't know. I don't see a whole lot of benefit as of right now. Uh, and then this guy is basically the gatekeeper, lets you in, but you give up a lot of money. So you can upgrade that. So right now it says I, I give him 94% of my money to enter the castle. So I'll basically end up with Jack. Um, that's the only way to get in. So it's in your best interest to spend as much money as you can. So now I'm down to 6 gold as you can see on the top left. Entering the castle. The very uh, start this room is more or less the same. Every playthrough you can read journal entries right here. You find these and they're kind of uh, the story elements. This just tells you you can check out your map. So right now there's a blue rectangle in the middle indicating I've discovered one room. And uh, the legend is on the bottom right telling you what's what. So that little symbol in the middle of the blue rectangle is a teleporter. That's this pad over here. Allows you to teleport to other teleporters. I think behind this door is a, uh, a boss. I don't know how you unlock that. I'm pretty bad at this game. Alright, so here we go. So like I said, platforming elements. Damn it. Okay. It's a great start. The game is pretty hardcore. Okay. You see on the left middle shows a little ghost guy and a little star looking thing those are the t <laughs> the two enemies that I killed on that playthrough okay so that guy's dead now you gotta choose another heir so this is the guy I just played and here are his offspring and so I decide from these three which one I want to bring in so I got a paladin Standard hero, pretty good at everything. Uh, his special, he's got a guardian shield, so I can hold Y and uh, 
not take damage. It'll it'll eat up your mana though. And then he has Conflux, which is a bouncing orbs. This guy, another Lich King. Um, special is HP conversion. I can convert my mana to my health and health to mana, vice versa, depending on which one I want at the time. Trait Dementia. You're insane. I don't know what that actually does functionally. And then Caprolalia. I guess he cusses a lot. And his spell is Flame Barrier, so you'll see a circle of fire around him, which you can use to damage enemies. Kind of nice, but eats up your mana pretty quick. And then the Shinobi, which as of right now is my favorite class. It just does a lot of damage. Doesn't do any critical damage, uh, but the base damage is, is usually enough to take out enemies in one or two hits, aside from major enemies or bosses. Stereo Blind, you can't see in 3D, so you'll see that in a moment. Spell is an axe, so I'm going to go with this guy. Confirm. I don't have much money at all, so I can't really do anything in here. So exit the matter. Same deal. Okay, you can see on the test time I'm doing 66, whereas if you remember the last guy was doing about 28. That's a lot more damage. Okay. Um, yeah, can't do anything with these guys. I'm not going to lock it. And you'll also notice on the bottom left of the screen, three icons. Those are showing the runes that I have active. Yeah, 94% of 16 is 15. Okay. So again, like I said, the same layout. And you notice when I turn, he's, it's like Paper Mario. Since he doesn't have three-dimensional vision, that's how they explain it. It doesn't really affect anything functionally, I don't believe. Okay. So with the Shinobi, I'll tend to just chop through. Chop through guys without much... Uh, Resistance, which is nice, it allows you to move through the maps a little faster. So, you want to destroy everything that you can. You can't destroy everything, like book, book, uh, bookshelves, torches on the walls, fireplaces. You can't destroy that, but. There's a lot of stuff that you can't destroy. Furniture. Oh, I didn't see those. You really sometimes you get health, like you saw those little uh, drumsticks. <clears throat> you really don't get that much health. You can see my max health as a shinobi right now is 51, which is very low. So he does a lot of damage, but he can't take a lot of damage, which is a traditional like rogue archetype trope in fantasy games. So for me. I'm more concerned about money than the actual oh, damn it. treasure chest because right now I die so much. So bad at this game. Okay, that's good. So I'm up to 531. I can actually spend that. And my health is at 26 right now. What I want to do is upgrade the Shinobi. And you get a, I don't even know how you pronounce it, H O K A G E Hawkage. Ho cage. Oh shit. I didn't even. God damn it. 
Okay, so you gotta watch out for traps. Like, see those right there above me? If I stand on those for too long, spikes will come up. If you see a picture moving like that, it's alive. They normally have a decent amount of health to where you have to hit them twice with most of the classes, but the Shinobi does, like I said earlier, a good amount of damage to where it's... Oh, and I keep forgetting I have a dash ability. So with the uh, right trigger and left trigger I can dash once in air, which is very useful. Now there are certain elements in the castle. Oh, let me check out this journal entry. Journal entry number eight. You gotta find these. Uh, they just push the story along, which is the story's not really a big deal, but it's kind of nice. From the number of dead adventures I have passed in these halls, I've come to the following conclusions: one, many did not take enough provisions with them. I assume many died of hunger. I myself am running low, and will have to find more supplies. Two, many are missing clothes, which explains the pants <laughs> pants wearing zombies. Okay. Three, no one has made it as far as I, since I haven't passed any corpses in over an hour. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> okay, like I was saying earlier, a few things that are going to be the same. In reference to the castle, that's the first area that you're going to enter. To the right, meaning if you just keep following rooms to the right as far as you can go, you'll hit the forest area. I, I haven't really did, uh, explored that that much. If you keep going up, I forgot what they call this. Okay, the Maya. Okay, now entering the Maya. And this is Ca Castle Hampson. Keep going up, you're going to enter the Maya, which uh, every area outside of the castle is tougher. And if you keep going down, you enter, I think it's just called the Darkness, and it's it's a little harder to see. Okay, yeah, so these characters in here. Oh, shit. These are a little more difficult. God damn, I'm already down to three health. So throughout the game, throughout your many, many deaths, if you're like me, you will learn uh, how to deal with certain enemies. But as you get to new areas, like I'm not that familiar with any of the areas outside of the castle yet. So I don't know how all these, god damn, all these enemies react. But even though I do 66, that thing takes two hits. And there are bosses in the game, too, that you got to watch out for. All right, I don't really want to go up yet. There's also hidden areas. Sometimes they're marked by the tiles being shaded a little bit of a different color or something to that effect. And another journal entry. Number nine, the door to the throne room is driving me mad. Beyond it lies the king's salvation and my reward, but it stands silent in the middle of the castle foyer, taunting me. Okay, that's that door I was talking about. I've tried pushing it, kicking it, yelling open sesame, but nothing works. There are icons emblazoned into the doors, and one of them looks like a beast I avoided deeper in the castle. Perhaps there's some sort of correlation. All right, well then, that probably means you've got to kill a boss in order to... Uh... Okay, speaking of bosses... There's going to be a boss in here. Money. Oh, I'm over a grand. Sweet. I might be able to upgrade the shinobi. What the hell's that? Oh, god damn it. I wasn't paying attention to the floor. That's what happens. So I killed quite a few more things in my first run through, but... Ah. <sighs> 
That is essentially what Rogue Legacy is about. So, I will do another playthrough before I end this video. 1090. I can upgrade the Shinobi because I have 1411. Let's do it. So now you see that says max because that's a one-time option. Class upgraded. Go from a measly Shinobi to the all-powerful Hawkage. Hawkage. Whatever. Master the art. Looking like you're hit, but secretly turning into a log at the last minute. Good thing you carry a lot of logs on you. What? Okay. Maybe that wasn't the best idea. <laughs> I can upgrade... Um, let's see... When, when I when I upgraded the Lich to make it into a Lich King, this block opened up on the left. Death Defy. Release your inner cat and avoid death sometimes. So I guess that's a chance to get a second life. Upgrade plus 1.5%. Yeah. So you'll have a 1.5% chance of not dying. And then as you increase, that percentage increases. Uh, I could have done that, but so my shinobi's upgraded. These two blocks are open now. Down strike up. Pogo practice room has its benefits. Deal more damage with consecutive down strikes. Okay, interesting. Armor up. Strengthen your innards through natural means to reduce incoming damage. Strengthen your innards through natural means to reduce incoming damage. Okay. So buff in your armor basically. 475, 1100. I only got 321, which is probably not enough money for anything. Yeah, looks like, nope. Everything needs about 550 plus right now. Okay. Don't think I can afford anything there. Let me see real quick. 350. Yeah, that's the cheapest, which I don't even want to wear. Oh, I already have it. No, 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 it's not unlocked. Okay. Squire chess piece. Uh, 350, yeah. See, but like I was saying earlier, you want to spend your money as much as possible. 425, but 321 just isn't really worth it. Okay. So I'll do probably two more playthroughs before I kill the video. You notice how the map is different now. Shit. Ooh, skill. Oh, you have a down attack too. Use it by uh, while you're in the air. You press down, and your attack button. So I'm using a 360 controller, by the way. Um, for me, it's easier. All right. So I'm gonna try to go down low show you the darkness area So it's a really fun game. I like it a lot. What I've been doing lately is uh, while I'm waiting for people to make their moves in another game that I like called Frozen Synapse, I'll... Um, um, number 10. Hold that thought. The emblems on the castle door are a clue. I slew a giant beast that matched one of the icons and I sent something shift behind the throne room doors. 
As if in a dream, I could see an emblem on the door glowing in my mind's eye, a truly out-of-body experience. At least I know I'm on the right track, but I must hasten my pace, for the king could succumb to his injuries at any moment. First, I must rest now. Tomorrow, I enter the forest. The forest, okay. So, I said I was going to go down low. Um, okay, yeah, so... What I was saying earlier is... What I've been doing lately is... Um, having both games open frozen synapse which is another great game and rogue legacy okay that was dumb having them both open at the same time and after i'm done making my move in frozen synapse i'll go ahead and play a few rounds of uh, rogue legacy while i wait for my opponents to make their moves okay so here's the forest so this is not what i was going for but I guess I'll show you this area. Oh. I don't know if that hurts me if I run into it. Okay, it doesn't. Good. Okay, so just judging from the enemies, this area is supposed to be easier than going to the Maya, which is straight up. Oh. Ah, shit. Oh, God. No. Sir Hershey has been slain by a bloob. I don't even pay attention to how much gold I got. Oh. Two, okay. Two Hawkage. Lady Chun Li. The fifth. And Lady Teresa. She has tunnel vision as her trait. No peripheral vision. I don't know what that means. It probably just cuts off the left and right side of the screen. Um, yeah. You've got two left hands and can't cast spells properly. I think that means you cast spells backwards. So her spell is fires a dagger, dagger directly in front of you. I think it comes out behind you. This one, it's hard. this is like, I always skip this one. Trait Vertigo, welcome to Barfsville. So you see that the character is upside down. Basically you play the game upside down and reversed, which is uh, difficult. All right, I'm gonna go with Lady Chun Li. This will be my last playthrough. I only got 370, so really can't do shit again. Wait, actually. Yeah, might as well. I don't want it equipped, but I might as well buy it. All the runes I have right now cost too much. As okay, so I went to the forest. Try to go to the darkness and see how the things are down there. Yeah, that's backwards. the journal entry? I normally don't find journal entries this often. Number 11, this forest is unlike anything I've ever seen before. It is both serene and terrifying. Stand on lush grass, but beside me yawns open chasm so wide and deep it threatens to swallow me whole. So I've not heard a response from the rock I tossed in earlier. A single misstep and my descent would be eternal. It's truly a horrifying thought. Eternity of darkness is more frightening than any beast I have fought thus far. If I fell, what would kill me first, the hunger or myself? On a side note, I'm now using the forest fissure as my own personal lavatory. I wonder if I'm pooping into another dimension. That's funny. Right, let me go up and clear this room out.
this isn't everything by the way there's there's quite a bit to this game which I think is a big part of why I keep playing it because I die so much I don't know if I'm ever gonna see everything because the game is pretty difficult for me but even though it's got a lot of hardcore elements the, the, the gameplay itself is pretty casual so for those times when I don't want to think too hard or concentrate on teabagging people in Halo. Oh shit. This is nice. There are... Um, some cool, like, treasure rooms, basically. Okay, that's back to the start. Let's check out the map real quick. I don't really... Okay. Someone actually tried to go to the left. There, there are some rooms where they'll give you unique objectives, like you gotta reach a... Uh, you wanna open up this, this treasure chest, but in order to open it up or to unlock it, you have to re... Whoa. You have to reach it in time. It moved the countdown. Okay, here is fairy chest. Yeah, see? Okay. So take no damage. Oh, I'm terrible. So now that chest is locked. Objective failed. So at the end there is a chest. Let's see if there's another one. Nope. If there's a boss. There's some money. So I can take this teleport pad back to the original throne room. So, might as well end it right here with a boss. Kiter. Kitter. I don't know. Terrible. <laughs> How much money did I get? Oh, I didn't even try my replacement technique. Let's do that. Let's get a little bit more health. I just teleport you away? Oh, no way. Alright. I know I said that was my last playthrough. Well, let's do one more. So maybe it'll be a uh, get out of free or get out of jail free card. big room.
Nee. health I'm almost down all right let's just keep going down okay I guess not all right well thank you for watching hope you learned a lot see ya